Hi everyone, I'm Tom Cherry Holmes, the guy behind Errata Online, and in light of the 1.0 release of Plato Term for the Commodore 64, I thought it would be appropriate to create a getting started video for new users to get connected to Errata Online using Plato Term. Plato Term can of course be downloaded from the Errata Online website here. We can see the announcement for Plato Term, as well as links to download a version of Plato Term for the Atari, Commodore 64, Commodore 128, and Apple II machines, as well as the release page on GitHub. The release page on GitHub is notable for not only containing links to the downloadable artifacts for each platform, but also the source code used to build the release for these platforms, and the release notes which currently serves as the primary documentation for the program, giving kind of an introduction to uh, what uh, Plato term is used for, uh, what Plato was, a little bit behind the history, etc., and some basic instructions on how to connect to the service, which we will take and go through right now. We will also have in each section a system-specific section, which primarily will give you detailed instructions on how to load the program for your given platform, as well as, most importantly, the key mappings to use for your particular machine. In our case, this is the Commodore 64, so coming down to the Commodore 64 and 128 release notes, we see down here a Plato keyboard mapping for each of these special Plato keys, along with their Commodore key equivalents. It is highly recommended that you keep a copy of this nearby while you're learning the system here for easy reference. Once you have downloaded the piece of software, and either launched your emulator of choice or have transferred this into a form that can be loaded onto your Commodore, one, uh, Commodore 64 or Commodore 128 running in 64 mode or Commodore 128D running in 128 mode, you can then load the software. And looking on the directory of the disk here, we see some interesting files. Of course, we see the primary, uh, we see the primary uh, Plato term executable here. But we also see a, a program for GPL 3.0 so that you can take and read the license in that is, a, that is presented with this program, in this case, the GNU Public License version 3.0. You also see various driver files for the various devices that are supported, including mouse drivers for the 1351 mouse, the Inkwell light pen, joysticks, and paddle drivers, aka Koala Pad. But you also see serial drivers for the uh, CMD SW Link 232 Swift Link, uh, and the uh, and a user port driver for user port 2400 uh, devices such as uh, user port 8266 modems. And as you use the disk, you will find that there will be a config file that can, you can save with the preferences uh, as you take and set the preferences inside the program. So if we go ahead and we'll go ahead and launch the program here. And we'll see after loading here, we'll be presented with a splash screen giving us the, uh, letting us know that the program is ready for use. I would like to take this time right now, actually, to uh, thank everyone uh, to get 1.0 to this particular point for testing. I appreciate all of the testing and all of the hard work that went into this release. Um, I'm absolutely stoked that this actually happened. We see some initial status messages indicating that the serial port has been opened. And then we see the Plato Term splash screen, along with an indication at the lower left hand corner of the screen that Plato Term is ready for use. At this point, we can either start typing commands to our modem, which if you have a user port uh, 2400 baud modem already set up, then there's no further configuration that you need to do. If you do need to do configuration, you can press F3 and you'll be presented with a menu allowing you to change various system parameters. In our case, I'm running a Swift Link uh, 232, running at 9600 bits per second. So let's go ahead and change that. We'll go ahead and set the uh, driver to Swift Link. And we'll go ahead and set the baud to 9600 bits per second. 
go ahead and save the result. And after a few moments, it will have saved it to disk and bounced back to the preferences menu, which we can subsequently exit. Pressing exit, we'll apply our changes automatically, reloading the serial drivers and touch drivers as needed for our new settings. And if everything works as expected, we should be able to talk to our modem. We go ahead and send a traditional Haze AT command for attention, and we get back an OK, which that lets us know that everything is working just fine. Fantastic. Now to connect, as it says on the website, to connect to Errata Online, we just send a dial command to Errata Online port 8005. For my modem, it specifies that a port should be specified using a colon command and the port number. So colon 8005 to connect to port 8005. Pressing enter indicates we connect to host. And after a small banner, we see our login page come in. Now, by default, you can see here that we can log in as guest and guest. And if we do that, it will take us straight to the menu. However, if we go ahead and sign up, with our account that we use using the big pink sign up. We get the opportunity to enter our password and log in. Now it is worth noting if you haven't logged in before, the system will ask you for a new password the first time that you log in. Once we have logged in, we have the main menu and we can bounce through various parts of the system. Uh, since this is not only controlled by the keyboard commands, we can not only use the individual keyboard commands like the letters to go to different menu items. But we can also use the touch screen to do the same as well. And for that, We'll go ahead and lock the cursor here so I can have access to it. And use our selected cursor button to select the appropriate items on the screen. This is of special note, especially for a lot of special games like Prey, for example, if we go into checkers. You can, for example, use the mouse to select your move. Go ahead and go into a game real quick. And go ahead me first. Now I could now I could of course input my move on the keyboard or I could use the pointer device to do so. I'll select this piece by selecting my pointer button and then select its destination. And so on. At any given time, should you be done with a particular lesson and you wish to go back to the main menu, no problem. All you have to do is hold down shift Commodore stop or shift Commodore S. Both will do the same thing and you will get an indication of whether or not you wish to continue working or whether or not you wish to sign off. We'll go ahead and continue by pressing the data key which is Commodore D and we're back to the main menu back to where we were. Now it is worth noting that all of these special keys, many of which are indicated here in this area right here, all have mnemonic representations, which means uh, the back key is Commodore B, the data key, Commodore D. The next key is special, that is the uh, return key or the enter key, depending on your machine, uh, and so on. So uh, in addition to being able to use the uh, 
uh, release notes as uh, previously indicated. Uh, you can also remember uh, these associations mnemonically as well. So in a nutshell, that is exactly how you get started with Plato term and how to use it. That's it. I will take and produce more videos showing various aspects of the system and of course there is a full-blown demonstration showing you every single aspect of uh, the system and what makes it unique. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope to see you all online on Errata Online soon. Thank you very much.